now is what photographers call the magic hour. I've just spotted another great shot. I'm going to try and put together a series of stitched images. I'm hoping for a really exciting shot. That's exactly what we want. The exposure range is just too great. Hi, I'm Carl Taylor, and in this week's episode, we're gonna be looking at ways you can display your photographs, modern ways to display your photographs. And this week, I'm with John Fitzgerald, who runs a professional laboratory for printing photos. I've used his services for many years. Far too it, many. Far too many, yeah. I've known you quite a long time, haven't <laughs> oh, I? Oh, absolutely, far too long. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, John's gonna um, run through some different types of photographs and ways of displaying them, hopefully give you a little bit of inspiration. Um, one of the things I wanted to uh, show our viewers, John, straight away, was these lovely portfolios that you've made for me in the past which are a bound together style, almost like a book, basically. Are, yes. And the prints, of effectively, that's the photographic print bonded onto the card pages. It is, yeah. Un unlike a lot of sort of photo books which are printed with just normal digital paper, these are photographs and they lay flat. Others have that sort of, um, sort of bow in them when you open up and you don't see the photograph to its sort of full potential. Yeah, this I really like these because they really do show off the images to, the, to their maximum, which is superb. And the other thing that I really like about this is the fact that it is the photo surface you're seeing. You don't actually have like a plastic surface over the top, which then ends up getting scratched and, mm. you know, detracting from the image. This method just shows the pictures as they're meant to be displayed. And again, with this lovely binding process for the, the machine that you've got um, offers, um, it's, it's a great way, I think, of um, displaying photos. And if you're a photographer and you want to get your work out there, then having a portfolio is really important. You really want to be able to show potential clients your work or even your friends and family and printing photos is so important, isn't it? It is, it's the only sort of permanent way of keeping images these days. It's too many, too many keep, people keep them on their computers or on discs and it's just so volatile. Absolutely, because I mean, you've got disc failures. I've lost images in the past that I hadn't even backed up that were on drives. And it seems that a lot of people just don't bother printing their pictures. No, and it's so easy these days. There's a load of people out there who can actually put these books together for you and they do a really good job. Mm. And, and there's also the technology um, in, in some ways, digital photography has meant that people have started storing their pictures on their computer and viewing them on the computer or on the iPad, but not necessarily getting them printed. But yet the technology today allows people to send their images over the internet for printing and sizing and choosing. You've got a system, haven't you? For... Yeah, we've got several systems out there. Um, some are designed more for the consumer market, some are designed for the professional market, and they, they offer a sort of different scale of products, uh, different styles, depending on people's needs. But basically, as a photographer, you can log on your website, upload the images, and choose your sizes, formats, and everything, and have them printed via the internet, and then Absolutely. delivered directly yes. to you without even setting foot in the lab. Absolutely. And I think, I mean, we use that service, which is incredible, because it means I don't have to come and see your ugly face very oh. often. But, <laughs> but no, um. it, it, is, it is a great service. And I think that one of the things that um, photographers need to be aware of is don't keep your great images on your computer. Don't leave them sat on a computer. Get them printed, get them on display, and show them off because as a photographer, that's really what it's all about. That's what you should be doing. And talking about displays, there's lots of other ways of displaying photos, isn't there? We've oh, got, you've brought in some great examples here. Let's have a look at some of those. Um, I found this one was really interesting. Um, gives people ideas for other ways of displaying pictures in your it home. It is, yeah. This, this is uh, from a firm called Artsy Couture in America, and they uh, come up with this really lovely concept of having block mounts on top of a block mount. Yeah, it's fantastic. And, uh, so the image wraps around the edge. And you, this one's just a, a four, four images on one sheet, but mm. you can have just a single one with a lot more sort of graphics in, on the background image. Yeah. Or... And they've used part of the image as the background graphic Absolutely. to sort of offset the others, which works really well. And it does give it, you know, it's things like this that are, you know, creative other ways of displaying your images of your friends, your family, in your own home. Um, this can give you great ideas of what you can do with your prints rather than leaving them on your computer. 
And moving on, we've got a more conventional sort of just standard framed picture, but a very classic modern, yes, so a, a classic I mean, modern style frame. People really love black and white images uh, for portraits. They're just something so, something so much more timeless with, with a black and white image. And if it's well presented, nice, nice cream white mount onto a nice black frame, it really sort of shows the photo. It looks very potential. elegant, doesn't it? It's yeah. very beautiful, really lovely. Very like classic. That. Yeah, very lovely. And on the larger scale stuff, I mean, this is one that I've had done somewhere else, but you also do these canvas wrap images we can, as well. Yes. Um, these canvas wrap photos uh, have created a lot of interest. People have seen these in the background on our videos and asked questions. And we're going to do another video about the very large format stuff. But John, your machines go up to quite large sizes for printing yeah, this sort of stuff. Our, our canvas printer prints uh, images onto 48 inch wide yeah. um, canvas material. I think this one was done on a machine that prints 60 inch wide canvas. Yeah. Um, we just don't have the space for that size. No. But in terms of people, um, getting something like this made, obviously shipping these with the mounted frame and everything would be a bit too much trouble, yeah. but the actual canvas material can be printed and sent in a tube Yeah, just, to just sort of roll like a normal photograph. Absolutely yeah. no problems at all. Yeah, and talking to normal photographs, we've got some lovely examples here on the floor of ones that you've made for me. This is the new super gloss Fujiflex, I believe it is called. It is, it? yeah. It's a, it's a display material that Fuji had, uh, had around for a little while, um, but it's becoming very popular because it's got a very cibachrome type of look and feel, mm. uh, and it's really, really difficult to damage. Yeah, it's very vibrant as well. The, it is, yeah. The, the, what I liked about it is, especially when you're printing from uh, high resolution image files, is the clarity that it gives. Mm. It's got a certain sharpness about it and a certain punch that maybe the luster images just don't No, have. absolutely, the, lust, the luster's meant for um, sort of, I say domestic display because people don't know how their lighting's gonna be set up, so it can just absorb all the reflections. Right. Um, you, can, you can probably see a few reflections in there, but then it's meant, it's really meant for advertising display, but mo like a lot of things, it's moved into sort of the, um, the, the domestic market for sort mm. of high impact. Yeah, high um, impact stuff. And then talking of the luster, that's a luster one there, isn't it? Still very vibrant and colorful, but the sheen of light on it is softer being it is. the luster finish. And um, again, here you've done a very large example, a sort of um, 30, is that a 30 inch? 30 inch wide, 30 yes. inch by a, a long panoramic one there. And the, the process of printing these, these are still photographs, aren't they? Yeah, they're still, it's, still, it's still like the old days. It's still a wet process piece of paper. It goes through a developer and the bleach and the fixes and washes. It's just got a different light source. Instead of having a light bulb projecting the image onto the piece of paper, it's got LEDs and lasers just working a bit like an inkjet printer, just spraying light onto the paper. Right, so in the same way that an inkjet head goes across the paper putting ink on, this is putting light, light yes, via absolutely. lasers or LEDs onto the paper. Yes and then that is processed in the conventional uh, chemicals that photographic yep. prints were processed in. So it's a very resilient media. Uh, ink, inkjet paper I find quite vulnerable compared to photographic paper. You yeah. can do a lot more with a photograph. Um, interestingly though, the canvas, uh, big canvas wraps like this one, this is ink onto canvas, isn't it? It is, yes, but it will have a seal on top of it. They will have either varnished it in this case or they will put a sort of heat seal over the top of it to protect it. Yeah. Um, and the canvas material being flexible, unlike the um, Fuji um, print material there, means you can wrap it, you crease can, it, yeah. fold it around the, items. The, if, you go, if, you go back, if you go back to this block here, the, the, the actual photographic paper has been wrapped around the edges of, of the block as well. Okay, is, uh, so what have they done to do that? Have they got a special cut or crease? I, I think, yeah, they, they, this, they have a template and they just sort of uh, cut out the relevant corners to be able to sort of get a nice really sharp fold. Right. So it is feasible then to wrap photos yeah. rather than just canvases Absolutely, as well. Yes. Okay, well that's interesting. And then over here, even little dinky things like this, this is quite cool. Yeah, um, photo cues, wonderful for the office. Yeah, I mean, great for putting a little sort of block on your desk of your family photos and stuff. Funky little way to display pictures. And it's just a little MDF block, isn't it? Is. it? With some uh, little stoppers they, for the they legs. Make, they make them in all sorts. We've got some uh, Perspex ones which sort of clip together so you can change them more easily. This, this is a much more permanent uh, model. But um, as I say, we've got Perspex ones where you can sort of take apart and put, put, change your photographs around. Okay, yeah. But I mean, that's a great idea. And it's things like this that, again, it's just getting those photos off of your computer and getting them printed into something. Get them, use your photos, get them on display, maximize the impact from your pictures. 
Now, um, triptychs, this is a sort of form of a triptych here where you've got more than one picture in, it is, in yes. a frame. I mean, so, so often you'll see people will just have one photo in the middle of a wall. It's nice to have them clustered, whether it's a, a triptych like this in a single frame, or you just have separate frames, but you sort of position them together to create one larger image, even though it's sort of made up out, out of sort of individual components, mm. makes a much more dynamic and expressive display. Yeah, and moving on from a, a different type of triptych then, is where the images are actually separated, uh, and they can be a series of images. This is a shoot that you've done, John, it a is, portrait yes. shoot. And um, I take it it's from the same family or something. And yes, similar... they're sisters down on the beach. Yeah, and, and here is a, is a great way of displaying the images because you've got a series of images that sort of form a set. Um, and these ones are canvas wraps. They are, yes. Yeah, with the um, wooden frame in the back wrapped around. And a lovely finish, great little um, piece of final artwork for your home uh, or your family pictures. And using this method of sort of breaking the images into sections and displaying them is quite an artistic, creative and modern way of doing it. Um, and then finally, John, if we just come over and have a look at this one, this is another one of your um, portrait um, shots because I should explain, John also works as a portrait photographer, so he does a lot of uh, family portrait um, work and weddings and that sort of stuff. I mean, this is very much more sort of traditional, but still it is. quite modern in many ways with the metal finish of it but it's got a very much more traditional framing type feel but it is a very elegant beautiful piece of yeah. finished art isn't and it? The, the, the framing companies out there are coming up with some, some amazing ideas on the types of uh, frame they're having and sort of combining it with double mounts like this one or triple mounts you can really show the photo off yeah and i really like it again even though it is considered an, old, an older style, the framed pictures, in many ways, they're coming back into fashion, they are, aren't they? Yes. Um, so and it's almost gone it's a very, full circle. You can say it's a very contemporary sort of frame would go in today's modern homes quite easily, yeah. where they're using sort of lots of black, blacks and whites and chromes in the house. Absolutely, and it does look fantastic. Well, anyway, um, hopefully that's given you a little bit of inspiration on how you can get your pictures printed and some potential uh, possibilities of what you can do with your photographs. Uh, how you can use them to their best effect. And the key thing here is if you've got great pictures, don't leave them on your computer. Don't just be showing them on your TV screen. Think about getting them on the wall and getting them on display. Right now is what photographers call the magic hour. I've just spotted another great shot going to try and put together a series of stitched images. I'm hoping for a really exciting shot. That's exactly what we want. The exposure range is just too great. 